in this demo I'd like to go ahead and take advantage of a sphere that one of you has sent in and uh, I want you to remember that a lot of the things that don't seem that important are really going to be used in a very important way later on. Don't take anything lightly because everything I'm teaching you is going to be a part of your whole method and uh, technique and procedure. And sometimes it's, it's easy to think that you're not that close. I'm here to tell you, you are very close. I think this is very well done, has a lot of great things going on, but there are a few things that are common, so I'm picking it out so that I can go ahead and illustrate what you can do when you see these things. And again, I'm trying to teach you to see too. So as you start noticing some of these things, you'll start tending to them, you'll have the confidence that you know what to do about it. And, uh, and we're going to go ahead and, and uh, de-emphasize some of the uh, little dark places. I want to do what I call neutralizing, what I call doodling. I do this periodically throughout my uh, picture. I don't want to say, well, I'll attend to it later because it has a tendency to accumulate and then it gets to be an overwhelming job. So as I'm going along, I would like to go ahead again and do what I call neutralizing in that I'm going to take out some of the very darkest places. Really, on the paper, you should be able to just touch it and that, that will take uh, much if not all of the dark off. But I'm going to tone these down at least so that the exaggerated contrast isn't there on the dark side. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do what I call doodling and I'm going to put my pencil in the light places. This will help you, uh, you know, learn a little control also in that you can hit that spot. It helps you again continue to fine-tune, know where that, that uh, pencil tip is actually hitting the paper. It's one reason why it's real good to have a, a, uh, a sharp point because you don't want it hitting uh, a little ways away from where you think you're touching the paper. Otherwise you're going to make another dark uh, mark. And remember, you don't have to be so worried about what pencil I'm using often. If you are following my, my uh, tutorials uh, I really don't want to always state what pencil, even though I know that's useful from time to time. I would like you to get used to the amount of pressure you're using. If it's leaving value on the paper with the appropriate amount of pressure, then you're fine. If it's not, change to a different pencil. If it's going on too dark with every little uh, effort, then you want to back up a pencil. And sometimes when you're doodling like this and you're just trying to, uh, again, uh, fill the gaps and you're you're really trying to uh, avoid making darker dots you would really want to back up to a lighter pencil because then you won't be so apt to uh, just make one more dark dot or spot and I'm trying to as I've said before discern the slightest little value change the better we are at this the better your cheeks and your chins and your foreheads and all those wonderful smoother areas on a face are going to be. Instead of having little blemishes and acne and everything else created uh, just because we are leaving all these uh, contrasting places. Now, I'm, I'm not going to take the time to make this absolutely perfect but I want to show you just how quickly it just takes me a few minutes here and, and suddenly we have a quite a bit different situation here. I've had many, many students almost embarrassed. Some of them won't even bring them into the class because they think they've failed. When I finally talk them into bringing their stuff in so that I can help them, they find out that it was just a matter of a tweak here and understanding this there, and they are home free. And it gives them so much confidence when they realize that they haven't been defeated, it's just learning a little bit more, a little bit more. Knowing what to do makes a huge difference. This is my doodling. Naturally I'm taking a very little short stroke, just barely touching the pencil on there. And if it isn't leaving any value behind, then go up to a little softer pencil. Be very careful though, as I've said many times, if you don't need your 4B, then don't use it. Because often People just feel like, well, that's, that's uh, one of the pencils I'm supposed to use. And so I encourage you to do everything you can with the 2B within reason. Don't press too hard. 
and only use the 4B for a slight accentuation of your greatest part of the contrast where it goes into the darkest place if it's needed. Because the 4B can so quickly dominate everything. And even though I'm taking these little short strokes, more of a doodling uh, uh, technique here, uh, I still am looking forward to going back to that stroke that is so good, has great coverage, has all that flow and grace. I don't have to worry about trying to put little teeny pieces together. I have much better coverage when I'm taking those longer strokes. But I wouldn't want to do that until I've, I've uh, given these continuity because otherwise I'll just keep accentuating the dots. I'll just keep getting darker and darker as well as everything else. If you tend to these things as you work your way through a picture, it's a whole lot better than feeling overwhelmed later because you have a few problems here and a few problems there and you just all of a sudden say, well, man, it's going to take me three days to go ahead and fix all this stuff. And sometimes it doesn't fix too well because if you keep trying to go over it, ignoring it, saving it for later, you're going to end up by not feeling as good about your picture and confidence, I'm telling you, is, is so much of the equation. Uh, and also, you're going to create even more problems than the ones you originally had because they're going to overlap. I keep saying things. You know how I am. It's hard for me to quit. I want to make this perfect. I've got to I've got to keep these short. So sometimes you may look at some of my uh, illustrations or some of my demonstrations here and say, wow, that isn't that great. Well, that's because I am often going to have to force myself to quit at a certain point. I want to get the point across of what you can do. That's my main endeavor here. Let's just say if I felt that this was this part in here is too much the same, this darkest value is going to have to be done in a way that is going to show a darkest place even within that. But it's probably going to be very small. And because we're looking at a contour here, I want to make sure that, yes, there could be a core value that's a little darker that helps us accentuate this contour of this, of this sphere. But also, I want to make sure that it blends both ways. That doesn't mean that it just has a soft edge, but the gradation changes a little the more it works into something that was lighter. So the darkest place, I'm going to try to make sure there's good transition both ways. Remember, it, everything gets lighter as it comes toward the light. So we can see what we've done and the progress we've made. Let's go ahead and compare it to what we started out with. And you can see what has happened in a few minutes of effort. And the same thing can happen for you. That's why I want to make sure that you know what to do. Because, wow, what a difference this could make in a cheek. Look at the darker places, the exaggerated part that's a little flatter across here, gave it, gave it a better transition into the light. And, uh, you know, even on, this, even on this side, look at how uh, there's really quite a tonal shift here. So you end up by having a lighter band across here instead of having it fade toward the edge. So, are afraid and you're not sure what to do, you're just going to keep probably accentuating the problem. And or get it darker and darker and darker in your effort. Don't be afraid to use your eraser to pull off the darkest. Take your pencil and and join the, the dots together, give it a little more continuity, bridge the gap, and then always be looking for contour. Look at your gradations. 